Okay, so good morning, everybody. We are just 10 minutes away from our 12 o'clock start time. Simon Campbell here. That's me on the slide. Uh, it is a few years older, I have to say that, that, that picture. Uh, I just have to disclaim that there's a few more grey hairs since that was taken. So uh, we're just a few minutes away from our start time. The round the clock trader working lunch. Thank you for joining me. I can see a few familiar faces here. Gordon, hello. Are you still in the east or are you back up north? I, I suppose you're still where you are. Everybody in the world is still where they were last week or last two or three weeks, depending on where you are. Um, we're all locked down pretty much uh, the whole world. Incredible uh, events. Um, obviously not a welcome event, but uh, incredible things happening nonetheless. Uh, but we have to carry on and just uh, keep doing what we're doing. I think it's the best way to uh, survive uh, these crises. Is there, there is being money made in the markets, and uh, I think we, in the industry, we're certainly seeing a, a pickup from new people entering the markets, uh, obviously sitting at home, wondering how uh, they can go about uh, shoring up the finances, perhaps uh, jobs are in peril, businesses are struggling, and uh, financial trading uh, is obviously popping up on people's screens as a, a viable option. Uh, of course, we in here generally cater to people that have already taken that first step into the markets uh, and are familiar with, with trading and are familiar with uh, a lot of the terminology, but if, if you are one of these people that are just getting started, um, please don't be afraid to ask us questions and uh, tell us to stop if you don't understand or follow what's going on. This is a, a, a new event. It's three speakers that we've got today. Uh, I'll be hosting it. Um, Steve Ruffley, as you can see there on the screen, um, there is a fantastic trader. Been on many of my round the clock trader events. In fact, we were neighbors in the Channel Islands for several years as well. So uh, I know Steve very well. Uh, fabulous following. Uh, he's now residing on the other side of the world in New Zealand. Uh, so he's luckily still be able to join us uh, through the miracle of uh, the, uh, the webinars. Great to see you all here. Welcome. Yes, I can see every, everybody checking in. Um, so we're following Steve, Sunil Mangwani, and I haven't personally met Sunil, but we've worked online together before. Uh, he'll be joining us as well. Now, Sunil and Steve both are uh, fans of Fibonacci levels. Of course, most of you will be aware of uh, the, the, the Fibonacci indicator levels that we use on the charts. Uh, and so they will both be um, referring to these in their charts. Hopefully we'll be able to look at the live markets and uh, also get a taste of how they interpret these levels. Every, everybody can have access to Fibonacci levels, but it's how you use them, I think, that uh, can make the difference between uh, getting in and out at the right time. We're also joined by Ben Kennedy today. Ben is the head of the UK for IRA Trading. Uh, AYRA trading. It's a trading community um, with all sorts of uh, advantages for traders to, to join. And he will be talking today, telling you a little bit about, about the company, bit, better than I can, uh, clearly. Uh, but he will also be focusing on risk management. They very much um, focus on the capital protection, risk management philosophies look after your pot and uh, keep you in the game, as it were, to, to continue trading successfully. So um, first up, we'll be uh, going across to Steve uh, in New Zealand. I thought that was only fair so that we can let him get to bed <laughs> at a reasonable hour. Uh, Steve, being being a new daddy, uh, any sleep is uh, gratefully appreciated. So we'll, we'll let Steve kick us off um, at 12, uh, which is just another five or six minutes away by my clock. And uh, then we'll go across to Ben, 12.30 to 1, and Sunil will take us from 1 um, up, up till 2. So it's got a bit, bit longer than a half an hour. It also gives us plenty of time for questions and answers. Um, anything that you have, um, anything that you're wondering about the markets, anything that you think our speakers can answer, please 
uh, don't be afraid to use that chat box. I can see a few, few of you already uh, making good use of it, which is great. So, hi, Stephen. Good to see you. Uh, Gordon, uh, still hot in Asia. That's good. Okay. And uh, yes, I just still have the hair. At some point, I'm wondering what on earth I'm going to do about uh, uh, the hair. I've been in Spain for the last three weeks, and uh, we've been locked down for three weeks. And of course, nobody can get to the hairdresser. So uh, thank goodness I'm not using the webcam because I'm looking a little untidy. Uh, and I'm looking at the, the citizens in the drawer every day, wondering and wondering and debating, <laughs> shoot that, shouldn't I? So I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. But uh, for the moment, I'll keep the webcam off, do us all a favor. Uh, but I hope you're all well and uh, yeah, surviving uh, lockdown, lockdown days and just witnessing what's, what's going on in the markets. I've started to turn the news off um, myself and uh, I think that's, that's working because it was all getting a little bit depressing uh, and worrying. Uh, but of course, good times will come again, I'm sure. And uh, we just have to get through this. But, Nice to see the whole world pulling together like this and uh, instead of the usual political squabbling that seems to have plagued us all for the last year, particularly in the UK with Brexit and so forth. Uh, we were all uh, very tired uh, of that, but of course we would welcome that to come back anytime right now, I guess. Um, but uh, we, we move on. The markets will uh, adapt and evolve given everything that's going on. And uh, it's unprecedented times. I don't think most people can predict what will be happening and uh, i guess this falls into the lap of traders uh, a little bit more kindly again where you just respond to what is actually happening what 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 trends can we actually see and uh, just just keep an eye on that so responding to what is actually happening is as opposed to trying to predict what will happen uh, in the future it might be the best uh, the best policy uh, as we go forward so we're just a few minutes away. I'm still waiting for Steve to, to join us. Uh, as usual, he will keep me uh, sweating away uh, until the very last minute, <laughs> then pop his head in, uh, but it will be there. Sunil, so I can see you already in the room, so welcome and uh, thank you for, for checking in early. We'll look forward to, to coming across to you um, after Steve. Uh, I know we're, we're, we're Sunil and I are working together and uh, we are putting on a two-day workshop. It was planned for London. We did have a, a hotel room at Heathrow booked, uh, but of course that was just prior to uh, this crisis uh, that's landed on us all just now. So we've swapped uh, that two-day workshop to being conducted online, uh, and that's going to take place in uh, April, uh, the 8th and 9th of April, so Monday, Tuesday, and it's going to be 10 to 4 on each day. There will be a break for lunch, uh, but it will be the full two-day Forex workshop uh, that Sunil has been running successfully uh, around the world for many years, uh, London, Jakarta, Singapore, uh, America. So he has had a, a lot of uh, experience in the markets and he will be I guess giving us a little taste uh, of some of that today in his in his half an hour session a little taste uh, if you want to find out more uh, about what he does you just go to Sunil's website fib4x123.com and you can find out uh, much more about uh, Sunil there but we'll tell you more about that uh, when we get started and give you the links um, for that. It's not a free event, uh, clearly it's two full days of training with Sunil. It's going to be limited, I believe, to 15 uh, people on the webinar, so it will be a, a very interactive, uh, I guess it will probably be mics off, uh, webcams and all that sort of stuff, uh, so we'll, we'll look forward to that. Um, but you can book that up either on the, the Round the Clock Trader website, just go into webinars, and you'll see that the details and the links in there uh, to book your place should you want to do that. Uh, I'll be there as well, so I'll be uh, attending that whole uh, two-day event, which I'm looking forward to. So Sunil will tell us a bit more about that uh, today. Uh, ben Kennedy, obviously Ira Trading. Um, I haven't uh, known Ben for that long. We met for the first time in London just at the end of February, the London Trader Show. Ben is uh, 
despite being the head of the UK, he is uh, based in Dubai. So, so in fact, none of our speakers are based in the UK, and, and neither is your host today. Uh, so this is the wonderful thing uh, of the online. We've got uh, a New Zealand, uh, Dubai, and an India-based speakers. And uh, of course, I'm sitting uh, in Spain. Uh, everybody locked down in each of these countries around the world. I guess uh, you guys also are based uh, in different places as well. So anyway, welcome to you all. I can see more people just starting to file in now. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our working lunch event uh, today, 2nd of April. How did we get to the 2nd of April so quickly? It's uh, March has just flown by in a flash and a blur. But we move on and uh, approaching uh, the Easter break. Okay, uh, sorry about the wee break there. Um, no Steve uh, currently at the moment. Um, just checking to see if he's uh, accepted my messages and I can't see that he's online. So um, something may have happened to Steve, which is a bit worrying. I think what we'll do is Unless Steve can join us in the next minute, I may ask Sunil or, or Ben to to come step in and go first. We'll just maybe see if we can change the order. Um, let's see, Ben is 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 here, uh, and so is Sunil. So thank you guys, both of you. I think Steve is not in the room. Okay, well that's that's unusual. Um, I know he normally likes to leave it uh, close to the wire, but he doesn't appear to be online. So maybe there has been uh, confusion with the times or or something like that. So um, should Steve come in, uh, we can we can always come back to Steve. But what we'll do is is we'll see if we can get started um, and just move ahead to to Ben. So. I'll take the microphone off and say, uh, Ben Kennedy, uh, good afternoon. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm <laughs> fine, I'm fine. Now, I'm coming to you early because you weren't expecting to, to start until about half past um, the hour, but Steve roughly doesn't appear to be checked in uh, at the moment, so would it be all right if we, if we, if we sort of Get get started with with your presentation first, and then we can go back yeah. to the start. Great, thank you. Well, Ben, I just to explain it to everybody here. We've got a nice crowd coming in. Um, but welcome everybody. Way, yeah, welcome. There, there, everybody start filing in then for our uh, to our round the clock working lunch. And and I'll just explain it. We we just met recently. We met at the the trading show in London. Um, when you could still get together and do do shows without social distancing and things. And good old day. It was it was a great day. Um, you, and it's interesting. Tell us 
maybe maybe what we should do is actually before we get started, let's share the screens, do do the housework, uh, and then and then we can find out a little bit more about uh, the, the the community of traders that, that you work with uh, and what you do. So what I'll do is uh, I don't know if you've used go to webinar before, but it's a, it's a very simple. I just pass you the the virtual mic as it were, and uh, that will make you the presenter. So I'll do that now, and uh, we can go across to. Oh, perfect. Oh. Is that um, Michael. dirty Michael? Is that sorry? I think I might have pressed the wrong, made someone else the presenter there. So it should be asking you to accept the. There we go. There we go. That's great. Now I can see. Uh, slide. Welcome to. Uh, how do I pronounce it? Ira. Ira. Aria. Aria. Of course. Now. Aria. Now. So yes. can everybody else see Ben's screen? Just to uh, use the chat box, give us a, a nod that you're looking at the Aria uh, platform slide. It's a black slide, um, and you can hear obviously uh, Ben. Great. And I'm great. Thank you. Okay, so Ben, as I say, we've just met. Um, you explained to me oh, what what you do, and I thought this is interesting. I'd like to tell everybody, I'd like everybody around the pot here to to learn a bit more about um, what you're doing. Because I, I initially I, I had it down wrong. I was like, oh, so you you must be a broker there. And you were like, well, actually, no, we do an awful lot more um, than that. Based based originally, I think created out of. France by some French traders, is that right? Yeah, yeah, along those lines. So, so where it was that um, that that Aria has been born from is that uh, it's from a group called Green Bull Group. Uh, now, it's important to know that that these guys are focused on three or four key areas. So that's um, real estate, uh, uh, financial education, and obviously trading. That's the, the now, within this kind of aspects, um, where it was that you guys decided to, to, to create um, that they could use for trading was that you know, we've got the largest real estate education platform in France, very large and, and obviously very successful, but we were at an, uh, an event and um, somebody said that 80% of trading is all around psychology. But then they spent 80% of the time not talking about the psychology, but talking about the signals, the strategy. And we thought, well, why is no focusing on the psychology and why has no one come up with anything? So then obviously Ari was, was born um, after eight years of research and development and, and now we've obviously brought it to the market after using groups to facilitate our own money management. So that's a little bit about where we've we've kind of got started there. Um, Ben, can I? We're getting quite a lot of experience on the. I'm not. It sounds like we've got a party line or something. Is there any any, any chance you can improve the sound? Somebody else has their microphone on. It's from somewhere. Okay, let me. Okay, so could everybody just have a check? Uh, you have a little microphone sign at the top of the. If it's, that means your 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 microphone is on. You press it and, and switch it back. I think that somebody's. Uh, it may be my fault. Um, I'm going through the rest. Uh, I can't see who's who's got a microphone on. So I believe it's um, Bertie. I'm not sure if you can turn your your microphone off for for just a, a minute, and then we'll see if that's that's fixing the problem. Yeah, Bertie. Bertie Michael. I just don't have Bertie's name in the in the list for some. No. Oh. 
Well, I think that might have might have solved oh, it. I believe we're yeah. uh, no, I've done it. No, I've done it. My apologies. There we are. Sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry, guys. That was uh, my oversight. Good. So, um, so yeah, perfect. I'll, I'll obviously continue on. So, um, that's where Aria has come from. Is is from the Green Ball Group as a whole. Um, now, I mean, the, the overall vision really is just to to try and make. Uh, as many people financially free as possible. Now, where I come from personally, I want to give you guys an introduction to myself. I know it's very much doom and gloom and we're all working from home, but hopefully we can kind of come together and, and, and enjoy um, a bit of time here and a bit of, bit of insight. So I am an engineer at heart. So I have an engineering um, degree within the aerospace sector, but I moved on from there because I guess I... Um, <laughs> One other thing that most engineers will tell you is that when they studied it, they realized they don't want to do it as a job. And um, I very much followed that, that ethos. Um, so I wanted something with a bit more, should we say, interaction and, and things like this. But I love numbers. You know, put me in front of an essay or a novel, and, you know, I'll fall asleep. But, but put me in front of some numbers, then, then I enjoy it. So I found my way into trading. I've then worked in a, worked in a financial um, organization within Dubai which is where I'm currently based today. And then I was brought into ARIA to head up the UK. Um, now, obviously, you know, went into the reasons for why Green Bull is, you know, is kind of such a, an interesting, interesting aspect for, for myself. But these Sorry. being the, the brands and companies. Let's just recap on, on Green Bull again, because I think we, we didn't really catch that about. Yeah, so. Green Bull was created by these six founders. Mm -hmm. So the, um, you can see the, the founders on the very bottom in the blue jackets. These being the 12 brands and companies that this as the group is you know, what, what these guys look after. Um, and these will specialize in real estate, in insurance, financial education, and, and obviously trading with the brand Aria. And yeah, the, the reason why they wanted to move into um, providing this, this education is because there was that gap in the market. You know, we know that 80% of trading is psychology, but nobody was, was making anything or, or nobody was actioning that to, to any large degree. So we know there's such an emphasis in, in needing to protect yourself. And that was obviously something that, you know, these guys went ahead and did. Does that clarify things for you there, Simon, slightly? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we just missed that because because of the the sound interference um, before. So just wanted to recap uh, where you come from. So sorry, carry on. No, no. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, perfect. So, um, so yeah, th that's obviously the, what their their mission is. And yes, I've been a trader for a while, and I'm sure very similar to all of you guys. We all started off on a demo account, and we potentially burnt our account first, and you know maybe signed up to some education. And the reason why, you know, when people, even myself, who's been in the, in, in the industry for a, for a long while now, or I should say a little while, um, is I've seen the different education platforms out there and, and yeah, they, they, they are extremely good. And I think, you know, they, you have to find your own style. But it, for me, the main thing is that I, I think being able to protect yourself is the key priority. To, um, to actually succeed in. So, I mean, I don't know if any of you know any martial arts or boxing or kickboxing, anything like this. You, you will realize that the best form of attack is defense. So being able to make sure you're not getting hit and that's how you keep yourself going. So I wanted to go through a few extra, should we say, tips to make sure that you are keeping yourself safe while you're trading. Now, the first one of these is not over leveraging. So a small story, when I first joined the industry, I, uh, I signed up to, a, uh, to an educator with a whole, you know, whole load of passion and, and excitement. And he was telling me that uh, I needed to uh, use leverage. And I thought, well, that makes sense. I can trade with a, you know, a huge account and I've only got a small account. Um, and it seems like the best thing in the world. And obviously the, the way in which they've positioned it and that they, um, they explain it is that you, you, know, you can have a, 1000 pound account but you can trade with the 30000 or 50000 and obviously your gains will match the 50000 
but you know for, for me uh, kind of having that that attachment I, I became so so invested in it I became too emotional and then if you are sitting there and you're following it you get a bit emotional and for me I, I just didn't kind of continue to, to to keep myself and the trade separate so then I, I invested too much and, and I ended up, you know, kind of being slightly unsuccessful. So the first lesson that I guess I would say to people is, yes, leverage is very, very good, but you need to know when to use it. Um, you know, some, something that I'm sure everyone else who's slightly more experienced will, will echo as well. Now, this was a, a study based in France, obviously, um, con or taken from the, the Green Bull Group itself. And that outlined 89% of traders lose money, which is no, you know, no news to any of us. But the average loss being almost 11,000 euros. It's absolutely crazy when you think about it. But people still jump in on a mass basis every single day. Um, now, I think one of the, the main reasons that people do end up losing this money is the lack of risk management. So they don't necessarily take the steps that they need to make sure that you know they're uh, they're kind of protecting themselves so everyone from the professionals right down to the new guys everyone can lose out on your gains and and everyone does but the thing that differentiates the professionals to the new guys is that their losses are much smaller you know everybody loses um, that's why we have the the risk to re reward ratio you know you don't need to win every trade to be successful but by kind of having your number one job is to protect that capital um, in trading. And I think it was um, Warren Buffett came up with a very, um, a very interesting quote, which was that in, in investing, he's not looking to make money. He's just trying not to lose money. And that's why he does so much research. That's why his fundamental analysis is just so good. When he invests into a company, he knows he's not going to lose. And obviously, if you've got such good fun fundamentals prior to you doing your investment or your trade, you are very well set up to actually be making money. So never trade without a stop loss, something I would say. Um, I think it's crazy when people do begin to trade with, without a stop loss. Um, and then obviously moving the stop loss, if it is that you're going through a trade and you think, actually, yes, I'm, I'm going to move it to my break even point. Uh, be careful if there's a retest on the market because that might stop you out. And also be careful with your lot sizes. That's an, another point that, that I think for, for everyone who might be slightly newer or looking to find out a bit more about the industry would, um, would, would be well placed to, to take into recognition. Um, and if a trade doesn't make sense anymore, you, you don't need to stay in it. You know, take yourself out of the trade if, if you don't necessarily need to be in there. Now, Within the financial markets, we all know if you're going to enter a trade, it's going to go up or it's going to go down 50-50. But how come we all get it wrong so often as well? I mean, not everybody gets it wrong because we know that there are people here leveraging the financial markets to make immense amounts of money. Um, you know, we're all very familiar with, you know, with some of the guys we can see on the screen here and obviously down in the bottom left, we've got the net worth of, of, of some people. Now, I, I, there's not anybody on there who will not have money within the financial markets. But I guess, what do these guys do? And what do the professional traders do? What can we learn from them? They don't give in to greed. So they don't, they don't try and take every pip from every trade. You know, we, the, the financial markets are huge. Was it over... Six trillion, I know it, it changes quite a lot, but six trillion dollars daily traded on the um, on the forex market as just alone. There's enough money out there to, to, to go around. So we don't need to squeeze every pip out of every trade. It's better to get 90% of something as opposed to trying to get a hundred percent of nothing if you get stopped out. So keep that into in, in your mind. That has to be very much structured in your discipline. And I mean with the discipline. That again, it folds into this psychology that we all need to follow. So the success of your trades depends upon your psychology. 10% is your strategy, but obviously 90% is your mindset. Are you patient? Are you timing the right trade? Are you getting in at the right place? Are you gonna get out at the right place? 
are you going to panic midway through or do you, do you have your you know your your gains and your losses managed do you have your structure have you got a journal these are all vital tips to, to obviously make sure that you're understanding where you are currently where you're going to be next and and what you can keep doing to, to moving forward you know do you, have you done your fundamental technical implemented your strategy does it still make sense if so then obviously great you're probably onto a winner but uh, but if not get yourself out of there so the next thing that i i, I find quite a lot you know when I'm speaking to a lot of traders because you know for myself i, I speak to a lot of uh, educators in the space which is a great opportunity absolutely love it but then in turn i speak to a lot of retail traders now the retail traders unfortunately just like myself we all get buyer's remorse it might be that you go and you you know you think oh i just need that new phone or you know i need to get those new shoes and you buy them and then something else crops up and you think oh if only i could return it and um, you know you start to, to 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 think should i have done that but if you're trading you've put in your your strategy you need to trust the process trust the system um, especially if you are doing a swing or a day trade where you need to be in the trade for for longer than a scalper so trust the process that you do have but make sure obviously you you, you kind of have that that process set in there now in trading what we find is your worst enemy is yourself unfortunately um, it's 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 the doubt it's the fear uh, and i know it's something that that everyone everyone will discuss but it's it's something that is is very vital and comes up time and time again so don't let the wins go to your head and don't let the losses go to your heart because you will get a few of these uh, uh kind of should we say uh, uh trading graph looking like this where you know the gains go up they go up and it's only like stairs but your losses are very big very big now where it is that that i've slightly ch changed my my perception is i'm not in trading to try and make money i'm i'm in trading to try and prevent losing so obviously i look at where i'm going to win and i'm aiming i'm putting implementing my strategy for where i'm going to win a trade but what i'm also doing is i'm aware that i don't need to win every single trade I'm not needing to take that risk. And the difference, I think, between some of the professional guys who've been in the industry for an awful long, long time and the guys who are fairly new is some of the tools that they have. It's the tools and the strategy. And that's why on the left, you see, we do have someone from the SAS and they obviously have all of the equipment. But then you've got the guys who just rolled into the industry. They think, oh my God, is it a case that you know i can come and i can make a ferrari and I'll, you know I'll, I'll be able to buy a lamborghini in no time at all um and unfortunately a lot of people get sold but you know you have to have the right tools in order to to move forward now what we're seeing is luckily with the digital age everybody is moving towards uh, towards the digital aspect of trading i mean you can see with algorithmic trades for example it's something that has progressed year on year on year and it's not just the retail guys obviously with everything moving onto youtube or instagram or these digital platforms it's also the big banks so they're looking you see goldman sachs they had 600 traders they got rid of 598 of them and then replaced them with 200 uh, digital software engineers and just kept two traders so we see this massive shift in the industry, but I mean, are the retail guys, are we, are we keeping up? I mean, what, what are some of the benefits? So then we quite often will we'll look at the advantages of, of algorithms over, over humans. You know, can we leverage any of these? We know that the speed of calculation of a computer is, you know, is, is infinitely better. We know they're more efficient. We know they're more precise. We know they're not gonna be manipulated by their emotions. So we know that there are benefits, but can we use them? That's the real question. And if we can, where? So instead of having the standard chart of gains that we see on the left, with the capital slowly climbing, but then massively dropping, if it is that you have some form of automation or you're able to, to kind of leverage these protected measures, then we know that you know we can protect our, our gains. That's by putting in those 
systems that I mentioned earlier, whether it be not giving into greed, making sure that you're managing your risk, this is all part of, of what will make you a very successful trader. So just to give you a bit of, uh, of overview um, for Ario, you know, part of, of what, what I bought into the, the vision and, and the brand of everything was that there are obviously there's identifying the trend. That's what you need to do as a person. You need to do your research. You need to make sure you're getting into the right trades. But then all the things that the computer can do, optimizing an entry point, actually executing the trade, calculating all of that. You know, how big is my risk? What's my lot size? Am I sufficiently covered? What's my liquidity and my margin? You know, I don't need to think about all of that. So that's obviously why you know, Aria is extremely useful in helping people progress to become professional traders. Um, now, one thing for, for anyone who is looking to, to be slightly more professional, you need to draw that comparison between what do the professionals have and what do you have? And obviously, how can you adjust yourself and start some of your expertise or tools to match them? So firstly, it's usually capital. That's one of the two biggest problems that we always hear in the industry. Um, firstly, it's that people don't have enough discipline and you know we 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 get too we get too attached emotionally or, or whatever the case may be. But then secondly, we don't have enough capital. Um, and so in order to, to kind of remedy that, what we've been able to to do over at um, Greenville Group is that we've opened up investment to retail traders, um, the guys who who are you know top of the top of the class and who not necessarily have a big account but just who are consistent, people who are making successful trades, we want people to do well. So invest up to a million dollars. Um, and that's a pot that's, that's very much up for grabs. So within the community, um, I wanted to put this on here because you know, for you guys who, who are interested in risk management and realize that 80% of trading is psychology, where are you gonna find some of this, this content? You know, you'll look around, you'll see endless amounts of signal providers, endless amounts of and strategy providers and yes some of these guys are amazing and you can't win trades without having a great strategy but if you do want to talk about some psychology and some discipline and, and how to emphasize that aspect where do you go so we have the hashtag we love aria community um, which is great and also we love aria world which is the, the worldwide community and then some of the results during this crisis because i mean with the markets dropping unbelievable amounts within a very short period of time, this is where you know, we've had so many people come to us and, and ask about, well, if it is that, you know, the, obviously the, the markets are dropping, how can I protect myself? So these are some of the results of the, you know, the community who, who've been fortunate enough to, you know, to, to be able to, to work with us and make sure that they're protecting themselves. Um, and then if it is you're, you're looking for more content within the, the protection aspect and the discipline, making sure you're becoming a, a slightly better trader. You know, you can look at the traders rooms or the monthly masterclasses that we have. Uh, and obviously I can send you guys over all the, the specific links for that. Working alongside some of the pros, um, having already been in different magazines because of this very different aspect. It's a very different approach that I think um, we're, we're, we're taking which has been something that's you know, very, um, very, very much appreciated by the community. So we would invite you to, um, to come and join the largest community, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. Obviously, we'd love to hear some of your different takes on how it is that you guys try and avoid risks, even how you become a slightly better trader yourself. Because one thing we noticed, and we know that within everybody in this webinar, everyone's going to have a slightly different mentality. One of you might think, oh, actually, you know, I only focus on trading in the morning because I know that's, you know, when I'm best. And the reason I'm best is because I apply X, Y, Z. So we want to make sure that everyone can trade and, uh, and be able to help each other with as much of this insight as possible. And obviously, anybody who, who is looking to have a conversation slightly further and understand exactly what it is that we do, then I'd be more than happy for you guys to ping me over an email or you know pick up the phone. Um, but yeah, there's there's my um, website and, and contact details for for those of you who are looking to um, just expand the brain a little bit more. 
Fantastic, Ben. Come thank on. you. Uh, that view, that view behind you out the window is not 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 London, obviously. That's you're in you're in Dubai. I'm based in Dubai. Yes, I do travel into London quite often. Um, slightly hindered recently, I will say. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's my so that's a French mobile number. Um, but obviously, those of you wanting to reach out can can reach out on my email, and, and I can give you a call back. Yeah. Do you do you have the platform running at the moment? Any chance we can have a look at the platform? Uh, oh, good question. Um, let me have a quick look for you. We don't uh, just. I can see a couple of questions coming in. Uh, some of them relate to... to. Yeah, I think Sorry. we just need uh, to, uh, a little bit of explanation of what. So this is the area platform that we're looking at. Now. Yeah, great. So um, for those of you who recognize this platform, you will see it as being um, MetaTrader. This is MT4. And I'm, uh, I've entered a, a position here, but let me just move on to the FTSE 100, for example. So you kind of load this up very much similar to, to what you guys are all doing. I am using a VPS, which is a virtual private server. So that gives me access to this on my phone, on um, on my computer, on my tablet, anywhere in the world. Um, now, I mean, Simon, is there anything in specific you want me to run through, just how Aria works and what it what it looks like, or are there any questions you want me to run through first? Um, Aaron's saying, how how does the platform vary in functionality for from MT4 or CQ, CQG? I think you've just answered that. So the Aria is, is overlaid on MT4. It's yes, yes, absolutely. So um, so with this being the MT4 platform, what I'll quickly do is just, I'll show you, so I've got um, ARIA sitting here. We'll take ARIA Pro, and this is, there is an awful lot of, um, should we say, parameters, which obviously you can change. Now, we know that people will not change every single one of them. We know that people are gonna use this for their specific strategy. Um, and you know what we've seen previously is when somebody is, let's say an educator, and they have a specific strategy they teach all of their clients. They say, well, look, if you are using ARIA, you would like your entry type, which you can customize here. You can customize um, your, whether you want a, an entry PIP buffer. One thing that I will say you cannot customize, and this is absolutely vital, is the max loss daily. So we preach very, very much about the psychology, about positive psychology and discipline. Now, if you're, if, if you're kind of let, allowed to, to run free, we all know that you know, if you've lost one and a half percent, you then lose two and a half percent and you think, well, I need to get that back. So you do one more quick, quick trade. You know, think, oh, the, the position's gone against me. Let me just go against and I'll flip my position. So I was short, now I'll go long. But if you're doing that, you've not set up, you haven't done the, the fundamental, the technical applied the strategy. So we make sure that if you have hit a 2% limit, you're best off just going home and coming back tomorrow. We all know how 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 we are. Um, so some of the parameters that we look to changing, you obviously can put a limit on your max loss weekly, daily, you know, consecutive wins or losses. And then we go into step three, which is you have various types of stop loss. So it could be yeah, fixed you know, volatility based on the volatility of the day, obviously, you know, pre-calculated again by the algorithm, which saves you an awful lot of headache. Um, a day low of the, um, a high or low of the day, I should say, um, you or price, and you can obviously change all of these here. Your profit factor is just your risk to reward ratio. Um, but you could have a, a trailing stop loss. And obviously you can change all of this here, but where we, where we see quite a lot of use is in these steps four. This is more the logistics. So obviously step three is the type of entry, the type of exit. You know, do you want ARIA to kind of help you um, trail your stop loss or whatever? But step four is logistically, if I'm a guy who wakes up at eight o'clock in the morning on a Monday, I've done my fundamental and my technical analysis on the Sunday, I know that the FTSE 100 is prime for a breakout. And let's, for an example, let's say we have this 
um, resistance here, it's going to break out, you know, to, to the positive direction. So I want to trade between nine and twelve. I want Aria to look for a trade within these two parameters. So we put that level high, level low, um, and then if there is Aria going, if the market moves into this position, and within the level high being five five seven six, and the level low being five five two five, then I can be at work, I can be doing whatever, and obviously I can log into it and, and have a look. But Aria will be able to activate a position for me um, based upon whatever it is that, that I'm looking for. So just to give you an idea, so I'll load so, up. Yes. So that's so I think I think we're drilling down a bit into what this is because we, we are getting quite a few questions. Um, Aram, Paresh, Paul. All asking similar questions, so can't quite understand what it is. Is it a trading community? Is it a broker or, or teaching? Uh, where can I get more information on the Traders League? So, to, I, I think I, if I, if I'm right, Aria is 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 a sort of a, an overlay to the MT4, which allows you to pre-program various criteria or recommends various criteria based on a a set of requirements that you tell it and then once these conditions are met it's going to ping you alerts to your phone and and, and things like that is that uh, yeah very much along those lines along those lines so so guys just to put it very um very uh, should we say in, in a very much a boiled down type of way what area will do is it's an insurance policy for yourself so okay. yes, there's fancy aspects where it can help you, um, you know, it can help with some of your stock losses, it can do whatever. But really what, what it is that you need to view Aria is, is yes, there's a community behind it. Yes, um, you know, we will, it will sit on MT4. But while you're trading with Aria, it's about you having your specific strategy, you implementing that strategy via Aria, and then this keeping the discipline for you. So that you can't go back and just think, oh, well, I'm going to quickly trade change this because we know that's where the mistakes happen. Um, so, so that's really a, a way to look at it as you know a very solid insurance policy which will help um, automate part of your trading. But naturally, you need the the strategy and you need to do the analysis. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dave saying not many brokers are happy to use MT4. So how will Aria place trades? Uh, I mean, as far as I'm aware, MT4 is the most popular um, trading platform worldwide for for execution, um, and that's obviously why we've you know why we've chosen that as our our primary, um, should we say, primary use case. But but we are rolling this out to a number of different platforms, and um, to, to yeah. obviously be used to uh, those as well. I would agree. Um, you know, MT4 is pretty much one of the standard platforms now uh, used by many CFD brokers uh, around the world so uh, it should be possible Dave to uh, to find a broker that can that can match up to the the MT4 uh, Marguerite says when do you when do you use clock rewind I'm not so sure a clock rewind yeah no that's very well, very well spotted there um that's so good. clock rewind you would have on the on the parameters um, for the benefit of everybody else. I will click back into the parameters and, and show uh, everyone exactly what um, what was found. So clock filter. If you enable this, it will. Like I said, if you are looking for a trade within these, these certain parameters, and I appreciate it's quite in depth, but um, the clock filter would be if you have highlighted this and this is the areas you want to find a trade within. Um, the clock filter is that it will do it between, let's say, nine in the morning and 12 at lunch when you know that you're busy. But clock rewind is where it rewinds the clock slightly and Aria is looking for potential just before it enters your specific trend zone. Or if you say, I want Aria to trade between, I don't know, nine in the morning and 12 in the, in the afternoon, clock rewind at around 8.30 will start to look for opportunities based on fractals and based on a number of different um, parameters. So, so that's what that will do there. But very, very good question. 
I hadn't planned. Yeah, well, spotted it, Marguerite. <laughs> That's great. I obviously wasn't paying attention. Uh, you know, all the questions coming in. Okay, great. So we've we've got a a, a much a, a better idea, a better understanding of um, what uh, Ari is. But clearly, the platform is just one piece of the puzzle because you've mentioned the uh, the, the, the community aspect uh, around the the platform as well. So uh, one question related yeah. to the trade league. I think you you showed a slide of of. Uh, a lot of people were sort of sitting in a big conference room, it looked like a some sort of traders league. Is is that an area event? Um, so what I will quickly bring up is um, the so the traders league. This was just a this is just a conference. Um, it's actually a conference held in France. So this is not specifically the traders league. The traders league is is um, those people using area. Uh, their results are obviously um, you can enter into the traders league and then from there they're all compared within a, a, a league of traders hence the name and then those people who are um, you know top of the league yes some of them do come to this event and, and this is where they get given the the extra funding and so obviously I think there was eight people last year who 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 were you know deemed to be extremely good and you know we took that hundred thousand we divided it by the the eight of them and um, those who had extreme results you know they they were obviously walking away with much larger trading accounts and then we split the profits with those guys uh, to make sure that you know their gains because if you make two percent on a one thousand pound account it's not the same as two percent on a two hundred thousand pound trading accounts so so we obviously want to you know help help those guys there okay so what if they can't get to this tournament how do how do people access the the funding and recognition from aria that's a question from aram yep so the, the way in which people do that is that you have to um uh, should we say clear a few parameters firstly be trading with aria um and that's because we have very strong faith in Aria's ability to act as a, you know, a buffer to make sure you don't burn an account because nobody ever has using Aria. So if you're trading with that, also use one of our partner brokers. And this is the only time where a broker is, um, is kind of, should we say, necessary to be with a certain person because we're broker agnostic. But for the Traders League, we need to make sure that they've got great execution, great liquidity, etc. Um, and then just be trading for three months or more with with successful results, really. Just be an area trader, do, you know, go about your business. Um, and as long as you're seeing positive results for three or more months, then, you know, we would give you a call and say, look, you know, we've seen what you're doing. We're very much interested. We, you know, we've put you or you will see that you're sim near the top of the league. So we would like to invite you along and, you know, we will allocate you funding. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. What about the cost? The website says Aria Pro is two hundred forty-nine dollars. Is that monthly? Asks David. So where we position this is uh, it's a lifetime product. Now it's not always going to stay as a lifetime product. I will say, um, but if you click through onto that link, you'll see that we have um, we have a price point which is around about $2,250. So you can pay monthly. Um, and obviously that will be for, for 12 months. And then you obviously have it for life. Um, so it, think of that as type of a, a payment plan. But if you guys message me directly, then there, there is a way in which you know, we, we would be able to, because we've created a, a very strong partnership here, um, is that you know, we would be able to have a conversation around a, uh, a very attractive price for you guys. Okay, so 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 everything everything's negotiable, <laughs> everything's flexible. That's good. Wasn't well, thank, thank you, uh, Ben, for coming on. Thanks. There's the details again. Um, just to note down bkenjariatrading.com. That's been interesting to find out about that. Yeah, I think we've got a good idea now of of where it's sitting. And uh, yeah. how we can how we can use we've seen Simon. something. Yeah, it's it's our pleasure. Uh, uh, sorry for drop throwing you in. 
the deep end. We still haven't found our Steve Ruffley. Um, I'm sorry to say, I've been messaging him uh, while we've been on air, but uh, something's clearly come up. This is not like Steve to uh, to not be available. Um, but nonetheless, what we'll do is we'll, we'll move on to Sunil after this. But Ben, thanks so much for, for joining us uh, today. And uh, I think we'll, we'll try and do something else uh, later as well. We said well, maybe we could do something later, maybe with somebody that's trading with ARIA already, uh, or something like that. But we'll certainly try and work out something else. But it's been great to, to have you here. Just a quick introduction to everybody um, that ARIA is out there and uh, you know where to go to, to contact Ben if it's something you'd like to, to find out more about. Um, Absolutely. Look forward to, um, to obviously hearing from you guys and, uh, and I'd recommend you check out some of the community as well and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up very soon. Will do. Many thanks, Ben Kennedy, Aria Trading. Okay, I will take the presenter role back. Um, we'll go. As you heard, uh, yeah, no Steve Ruffley, uh, which is a great shame. We've been chatting uh, most of the week, uh, Steve and I, um, we share uh, quite a lot of history together, worked, worked together many years, and uh, we, uh, we've we been catching up this, this week uh, in the lead up to the webinar, um, but uh, something's, something's popped up and uh, he's not able to, to join us uh, today. He may well still surprise us, um, but until he does, what we're going to do is we're going to skip straight ahead to our next speaker. Uh, maybe he's fallen asleep with the baby. Uh, Gordon, I think you, you're probably hitting the nail on the head there. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we were uh, Jersey boys for some years. Indeed, uh, pure coincidence. We ended up living just a, a mile apart from each other on the island of Jersey uh, for all these years. Sunil, I am uh, going to unmute your mic. So we can say good afternoon to you. Sunil Magwani. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, uh, voice, audio, okay, can you hear me? We can, yeah, I can hear you. This is great. I haven't yet given you the, the presenter role, uh, but yep. just wel welcome you in. Um, we're a little bit earlier than planned, as, you, as you're hearing our, our, our speaker, Steve, <laughs> is not going to make it that uh, good yep. that uh, you are waiting there uh, in the wings, so to speak. So. That's begin to so we've got a bit longer um with with you which is great so maybe we can get into a little bit more of the the fibonacci um strategies that, that that you talk about now i don't know if you caught before we started i did mention to everybody that you and i are putting on a, a two-day event um coming up in just about seven or eight days uh, and it's going to be a webinar event it used to be the that we plan to do it in London at the Heathrow Hotel, but we're now, because of the, the lockdowns, obviously doing it by webinar. It's a full two-day event. Maybe you can mention that uh, just as we go through. Um, yep. But clearly, it'll be something that we're going to get, just get a little taste of, of, of how you trade. But uh, as I pass the presenter role to you, um, maybe you can tell people a little bit about yourself and you've been trading um, for quite a while now, uh, but also been educating people around the the world, doing these various um, workshop programs. Now, I am looking at your PowerPoint screen. It's a slide called Forex. Yep. Is that the slide we should be looking at? Yeah, that, that, that's the slide. Okay, super. So, do you plan to, to 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 put that into presenter mode? Can you can you make that in the presenter mode so it will maximize? Yeah, that will be better for the webinar. So great. So, so Neil, we again we've only known each other over the phone. We haven't actually met physically, um, yeah. but we've got to know each other. And of course, we all, we know a great deal of uh, we have a great deal of mutual uh, friends uh, in the industry. But it's good to, to know you. I've obviously been tracking um, what you've been doing, but tell us a little bit, maybe just first of all, when you started trading. Oh, uh, today it's been almost 20 years. I started in 2001, so 19 years plus I've been trading and just Forex. I concentrate 
mainly on the forex market. So it's been 19 years. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and 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 is that as a full time trader, or did you start part time and then? Um, no, actually full time. It, it was it, it was what you would call that I burnt my bridges behind. I had my own construction business here. It is a family owned mm-hmm. business in India. I, I'm a resident of India. I'm still in India, but uh, got offices all over the world. But at that time, I had my construction business. For some reasons, I got into Forex trading and then decided that this is what it's going to be. And I took the plunge. So I've been trading full time literally since the last, well, you can say 18, 19 years now. Fantastic. Okay, so so why Forex? I mean, this is again, just links maybe to your first slide. Um, yeah. You're going to explain to us uh, why, why you've chosen to, to focus on Forex. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Well, let, let me give you a little humorous background on this. One, uh, in India, as of today, even as of today, uh, forex trading is not allowed. It's illegal for a resident of India to trade in the spot forex market. So when I started all these years back, obviously there was nobody at that time. Even today, there hardly anybody professionally trading forex. So people again ask me the same thing that, okay, you moved over from a brick and mortar business onto an online thing and you went into gambling I mean, stocks trading you know still seeing as gambling but why currencies nobody trades currencies here in india why the hell did you choose why not stocks why not commodities well one thing about the forex market is it's a great market to trade or uh, it has a lot of disadvantages i would say but the advantages far outweigh that What you see on the charts is what you get. As compared to any other market today, when you're trading equities, you're trading commodities, there are a lot of fundamental factors which influence the price. If you want to buy shares, you would look at the company performance, government policies. You know, commodities are dependent on seasonalities, a lot of them supply and demand, physical supply and demand. So the ratio of fundamental to technical analysis, if you can call it, is any other market would be maybe 50% more fundamentals, less of technical. In Forex, what I saw right from the beginning in foreign exchange is technical analysis rules. What you see on the charts is what you get. Of course, fundamentals are important, because you are actually trading the currency of a world, of any country. So obviously we need to know some fundamentals, but it's the background and this is what my presentation is all about today. I don't think I'm going to go over too much of Fibonacci's over here. What I want to do is talk about the Forex market, which a lot of people know that it's got a huge turnover, but they don't understand the working of the Forex market. And I want to go over this, going over the advantages and the disadvantages. So Forex was, I I have a background in mathematics. I graduated in mathematics and physics. And for me, give me a chart of technical analysis in front of me and try to design some strategies that really appealed to me. And what I could see on the charts is what I get. So that is the reason I stuck to Forex all along. Sorry, is there any there? Yeah, yes, I'm here, Sunil. Yeah, would you like to? Yeah. Uh, it's only recently that uh, in the last couple of years, maybe that I've moved over to certain commodities also because we do have a very strong correlations between currencies and commodities. But it's the forex market, which because of the turnover, you have opportunities coming over. It's purely technical analysis. And the way it works, which is what we will be going over, gives it a huge advantage at the same time as then went over right now. It's almost 90% of the people, retail traders, I would call them. Individual traders like you and me, we are retail traders. We are not institutes, we are not banks. 90% of the retail traders lose money in this business. And this is what I want to talk about today is why do people lose money? The simple fact is that if there is a certain 10% of the people who are making money and 
very honestly, I can count myself among that today. I have been successfully trading the forex market since the last 15, 16 years. I make a living from it. Obviously, like any other trader, I mean, I could tell you that the first two, three years when I started, I blew up a lot of accounts, literally. But it's the learning curve everybody goes through. So if there is a certain amount of people who are making money, then obviously there has to be a way. And it was all over in my years of understanding what made me successful that I started coaching people, telling them this is right, this is wrong. And one of the main things which turned my trading around completely was it, it was in London. Now, I, I did have a company in London called the London School of Financial Trading, which we kind of closed on about three, four years back because I moved to the US for a period of about three years because I just wanted some exposure to the US market. But I had been running the London School of Financial Trading right from 2011 onwards. And it was based in, in London, in Acton. We still have a small office in Acton over there. I used to be a regular, I used to be six months I used to be in London. I was a regular speaker with all the expos, very specifically the World Money Show every November. I mean, I was a standard speaker over there. It was during that time that I came across, I happened to train a couple of banks in London. Now, we know that London is the forex center of the world. Almost 60% of the entire worldwide forex takes place in London. Every major bank of the world has got its own trading office over there. For whatever reason, you have a geographical advantage, you have good liquidity over there. I happened to, it was in, let me go through this very interesting thing. So I was doing a talk on risk management in one of the world money shows. Uh, it was a huge audience. It was kind of open. You know, we had about 150 people over there, and I was going over the concepts of risk management. At the end of it, there was an elderly gentleman who approached me after doing the question answers, and he said, I really like your concepts of this risk management, and would you mind doing a session on risk management for my traders? I said, yeah, sure. Then who are your traders? So he says, I'm the head trader for Bank of America. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, you guys trade billions of dollars, literally. And you want me to do something? So he said, no, we have our own systems. And I'm not asking you about the technical part of it, but my traders need some discipline. And I think this is what can bring a little bit of discipline. So my condition was I need to spend two days on the floor and I need to see how you trade so I can employ, you know, implement the policies of risk management. And believe me, Simon, those two days changed my concept of trading completely because now I was on the other side of the market. Bank of America, London branch by itself trades close to about seven to 10 billion a day, literally. And the way the banks can move the market, they have the money to do that. I was on the other side and I saw the only place the only reason that they moved the markets was to take out the stops of the retail traders. It completely opened my eyes. And even though at that time I was kind of successful, I was doing well, that changed my concept completely. And then all my strategies today are based on this concept that a professional is just out to take out the stops of a retail trader. I mean, it is shark infested waters is what I call it. If you're not careful, you just cannot survive in this market if you're not careful. And there are a lot of factors to it. So whatever we do today, the policies of risk management, trading strategies, including the Fibonacci's, it's based on what I learned from there. And let me give you a good perspective based on the Fibonacci's on this. I mean, everybody in the room would agree when you use Fibonacci's, you open up a chart and you have the standard Fibonacci retracement tool. That, that's the only, everybody uses the standard Fibonacci retracement. You have a standard level of a 38.2 or 50 and a 61.8. Now the 61.8 is considered to be the golden mean and it's the most important Fibonacci number. So the way it works, I look at it, it's like a herd mentality or you know everybody's looking at that level. So let's say you're looking at price to come 
to a support level of 61.8. A lot of traders are looking at that level. If price reaches there, they said, okay, that's a great level and let's buy it because that's a good support. And then they would want to buy it over there. Should we be, should we be looking at a chart at the moment or are you just, I'm still looking uh, at the Forex slide. Well, you know what? Let, let me go over this slide. Uh, let me start off. Unless you have some other question. I, I'm sorry, I just went off on a tangent somewhere. If you have some other questions. No, sorry. To... I'm just worried that maybe I, I was supposed to be looking at a slide or something. It yeah, sounded yeah. like you were referring to a chart. So what I want to do is go over the background of how the Forex markets work with the slides. And then we'll go over the yeah. charts. I want to go over the charts and talk to you about how these people trap the traders. Would that be okay? Okay, great, thanks. Okay, all right, let, let me start off with the slides. We'll just go over the slides quickly. It's not much, but it's important you understand the psychology behind it. So yeah. Forex, it's got a huge turnover of about six trillion a day. It's a tremendous turnover, more than the combined turnover of the London and New York stock exchanges put together. But there are two little known facts about the Forex market, which it's knowledge out there, but people just don't look at it. The first thing is almost 60 to 70% of this entire turnover is done by banks. Now, these are the statistics. So this is every year they have the surveys and they have the liquidity providers. So this is 2017. You can see that there's a group of 10 banks and the market share is close to about 65%. You can see that they have a group of 10 banks. This is 2017. Uh, you have this Euro Money does this FX survey every year. 2018, again, the same banks, some move up, some move down. Liquidity providers, mm -hmm. it, it's what it is. And 2019, this was the last one. The total again remains the same, about 60 to 70% of the total market. Now, when we talk about liquidity providers over here, you're talking about JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, Citibank, UBS, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs. The way Forex works is there is no central exchange for Forex and we all know that. So you're dealing with a broker. Now, your broker takes the quotes from these liquidity providers. If you have a very good broker, he's got good liquidity providers, any one among these 10. Unfortunately, in Forex today, there are a lot of brokers who are unscrupulous. So they would have liquidity providers, not among these, but some small banks, so the liquidity would not be all that good. But it's just the way Forex works. So if your broker has a good liquidity provider, who's among these top 10, which means that they have enough money. Now, if we just take the first one, JP Morgan, you're talking about 10% market share. 10% of 6 trillion is a huge amount. So that is the amount that JP Morgan trades. Banks are also known as the market makers. The simple fact about Forex, let, let's put it as currency trading. Traditionally, it's always been the banks who have been trading it. It's only in the last, actually, 20 years. 2001, when I started, I remembered Forex had just opened up for the retail traders. There were these brokers who had started giving out accounts. Otherwise, it was always the domain of the banks to trade currency markets. Retail traders were just not allowed. Unless you had a huge account and Citibank allowed you to open an account with $100,000 and trade something, it was always the domain of the banks. Today, if you and me, we want to change currencies, you know, we travel to another country, there are companies who are into exports, they change currencies, you will go to a bank. You and me, we might go to an exchange provider, the exchange provider ultimately goes to a bank. So the bank is the entity that trades currencies. They are the ones who create the demand and supply. And I'm gonna go in, into this a little more in detail so this is one that it's your banks who are controlling this market in a way. The second important point out of the total 6 trillion turnover, about 70% of this trading is non-deliverable, which means it's traded for speculative purposes. 
So more than half of the six trillion done trading today is for speculative purposes. Now, when we talk about speculative purposes, let's differentiate between what a genuine purpose and what a speculative purpose. So genuine purpose is, you know, like I said, companies who are into exports, they need to exchange currencies, they need to export, import. You and me, we change currencies. Genuinely, we need currencies. That, that's classified as genuine forex trading. That's for institutional purposes. But today, 70% is done for speculation. So it is when the market opened up to the retail traders. It was banks who started doing more of more speculation. They were always trading for their clients. The banks always trade for their clients, obviously. But they started more into speculation, to be very honest, because they saw there's a lot of retail traders who come in who just don't know what's going on. And because, again, Forex has got this uh, impression people have that it's a 24 hour market. You know, I can, it's got a huge turnover. So I can trade anytime I want. I can have liquidity anytime I want, which is not a fact. The question you have to ask yourself is if almost 70% of this trading is done for speculation, what is the reason for them to take a trade? So is this speculative trading based on fundamental factors? Is it based on technical factors? Well, let me tell you, primary trading decisions by the banks, and again, I told you that I've been on that side and I've seen it, is to take out the stops of the retail traders. That, that's how they move it. Trust me, I've seen the banks over there. You know the language they talk about that we will drive price to this level. This is where the retail traders are going to come in and this is where we're going to kill them. I and mean, there's a language they talk about, literally. And this is what I want to explain here, understanding this as a Forex trader, as a retail trader, when you come into this market, you must understand the working of this market. Let, let's just go over a very simple thing. The basics of trading right now when we trade most traders they just forget about this absolute simple concept of trading if you want to buy something i mean you could trade any financial instrument it could be a currency it could be a stock it could be a commodity it could be a bond anything if you want to buy something somebody has to sell it to you and obviously if you're selling there has to be a buyer on the other side of the market in effect, what you're doing as a trader is you are trading other traders. You may be buying and selling a financial instrument, but you are trading other traders. So this is where your psychology of trading has to come in. Obviously, you think something is going to go up. At the same time, somebody is thinking that it's going to go down, which is why he or she or the institute is selling it to you. So knowing who is on the other side of your market is the most important thing to understand what trading is all about. And I think this Ben talked about more psychology of trading. We, as Forex traders, I have seen over the number of years, people who come into this market, they just look at a technical trading system. I want a system. But Forex trading or any kind of trading is much more beyond the system. There are so many things which go into a trading process, which is what I want to talk about more. So in Forex, when you are trading Forex, the other side of your trade most likely is going to be a bank because they are the ones who are trading almost 70% of the market, right? I've put together a couple of charts over here and let me explain this now, basics of trading here. So I've deliberately chosen this chart. It's a daily time frame because this had a downtrend. It had an uptrend. Then it had a downtrend. So I wanted to go through this process. Trading is fractal in nature. What applies to a daily time frame will apply to a one minute time frame. It's just the nature of the market is what we call as the law of the charts. So just forget about the time frame that you're looking at on the chart. This could well be a five minute chart. It could well be a one hour chart. It's the same concept anywhere. So first of all, anticipatory sell orders, anticipatory buy orders. Now the way currencies work, especially in the Forex market, I mean, it applies to any market to be very honest. 
but since we had, I, I want to talk only about the forex market over here. Is the banks have got these anticipatory orders at certain levels, right? We we can call them demand and supply levels. So even before price reaches there, a bank has already placed an order. Now, if you're looking at, let, let's just talk about this uptrend over here, right? You have this uptrend. When price starts moving from here, there's already some sell orders placed here by the banks. Now, this serves two purposes. One, they have a target knowing that they need to drive price all the way over there. That's where they make their profit. And second, they need to create the demand in the market. First, let's concentrate on one thing. Let's start with the basic. Now, your actual trend starts from here. Uh, you can see my mouse. I'm, I'm right at the bottom of it over here. Your trend starts from here. Now, for whatever reason, I would say that if the downtrend ended over here, obviously there were already some buy orders placed over here. It's a question of supply and demand. If price is going down, there is more supply in the market, you would call there are more sellers in the market. And if price starts going up from a particular location, a particular level, that means there are more buy orders than sell orders at that level. Obviously more buyers come into the market, overwhelming the seller so price starts going up so we can say that there were large amount of buy orders present over here which is what changed the trend right now price started going up and let's say now this bank let, let's just talk about one bank this one particular bank he starts buying this currency from here this financial instrument and his target is over here so he's already placed sell orders right over here let, let me give you an example. When I was sitting with Bank of America, I mean, this actually describes it to a very fine extent on a very practical extent. So one of the cases was, you know, the head trader comes into the morning and they had a group of about seven to eight currency traders, very specifically for currencies. They had some other traders trading some other commodities, bonds, etc. Currency desk was about seven to eight traders. So he comes in and says, OK, we've got a commitment. So they had a client who wanted to change the British pound to the US dollars. Maybe he had some orders. So he wanted to convert his pound to dollars. So obviously he wanted to sell the pound and buy the dollars. So in terms of currencies, let, let's talk about that. You wanted to sell the GBP USD. Now let, let's take this example. Let's say that you are looking at this chart. So current price is I wonder if I have an annotation tool over here. We do have an annotation tool. Let me just give me a pen. Let, let's say that the current price was somewhere over here, right? Th this is where current price is. Now, I I'm looking at this uptrend exclusively. This is where current price is right now. So this head trader gives a commitment to the client that, okay, we, we are going to buy for you. And he gives a quote. This is where current price is. So he gives a quote that we will buy for you somewhere over here. He, he gives a better price. Now, obviously, a client also will go to maybe five banks and find out which bank gives me the best quote. So this guy gives him a quote that, OK, we are going to buy for you over here. We, we are going to give, give you a better rate. I'm just giving a standard uh, round example, OK, not getting into figures. So they've got a commitment of buy orders coming in over here right now. Current price is over here. So the head trader comes into the floor and he tells the traders, all right, guys, we've got buy orders over here and we've got a commitment. So you've got to fulfill. So we've got a buy order for, let's say, $6 million that we need to buy $6 million of this currency over here. This is price. Your job is to drive price over there. Drive price over there and buy it for the client. In the process, you also have your own funds. You can trade your own funds, etc. So this is one of the reasons where the bank has a genuine purpose for it. Along with the genuine purpose, they will include their own speculative purposes. Now, what the bank does is this is where it is. So they will start buying aggressively at this level over here, painting, and they call it painting those green candles. So you have price going up. What does a retail trader do? When does a retail trader come in? 
believe me, when I have been coaching traders all over the number of years, one of the things is when a trader comes to me and says, okay, I want to learn, or maybe I've done some trading, I wasn't successful. And if he has done some trading, he or she, I would say, okay, just let's go over your trading record. And one of the simple questions I would ask, I still do ask is, when you took this trade, what was the reason for you to get into this trade? You're not gonna believe it, Simon, but 90% of the time it would be, oh, because price is going up, because the moving average is set so, because I saw in the news that the US dollar is going up, so I decided to buy. There is no technical analysis reason for it. And this is how retail traders trade. And the banks know exactly this. So the banks start driving and they will drive price over here at this particular stage, don't you think that a retail trader is going to come in over here? Because what he sees is that price rise from here to here. And now that fear or that greed has taken over, that price is going without me. So I get into a buy. When a retail trader comes into a buy, if price is going up, someone has to sell it to him. Now, if price is going up, you must ask yourself, why would someone want to sell? If price is going up, I don't want to sell, right? I want to ride it till it keeps going up. So someone has to sell it to him. Who's selling it to him? It's the bank. Because the banks have their order right over here. They will create those green candles. They create the demand. So they want more buyers into the market. As soon as the buyers come in over here, this bank sells in about 6 million worth of that order of the client over here. A retail trader is trading with 5,000, 10,000. A group of retail traders would probably have 100,000, $800,000. You have 6 million of sell coming in. What happens? Boom, price goes down. And the retail trader gets stopped out. And he starts panicking. For some time, he's making money, but he doesn't know what's hit him. He has no clue of what's going on. So if his stops are taken out, let's say he enters over here, he's got a stop loss somewhere over here. If a stop loss is taken out, what happens in an order? When I'm buying, when I close an order, it becomes a sell order. So if I'm in a buy trade, my stop order gets taken out, my order is a sell order. So my sell order is triggered. If my sell order is triggered, somebody has to buy it from me. Who's buying it? The bank comes in again over here. They know exactly where the stops are. They'll step in to buy some more over here because ultimately their target is to go all the way over there. And this keeps happening. This is one of the reasons why price always moves in waves. It never moves in a straight line. It is your professionals taking out the stops, retail traders getting stopped out, re coming back into it. Now this guy gets stopped out. The bank is buying over here. It goes up over here, this retail trader gets into exactly what Ben just talked about, the psychology of trading. He gets into revenge trading. I have lost this money over here, I need to recover. Price is going up again, I've missed the bus, he buys again. For some time, it's going fine. Again, boom, the same thing happens the second time. And he doesn't know what's hit him. So this is just how the market works. Eventually, at the end of it, the bank has got to sell orders right over here. Now, if he has got sell orders over here, what do you think an institution needs to fulfill those sell orders? They need buyers in the market. How are they going to create buyers in the market? They create demand. So what they do is the last stage, and this is part of the strategy that we go over, and if we have identified a zone, well, I, I could tell you that I can identify zones with a fairly large amount of success because I know how the banks do it. It's not 100% successful, nothing ever is. But if I anticipate a zone over here, which we call as a supply zone, and if I see a huge move going into a zone, I know the possibility of a reversal from there is very strong because that's the trap which is being created by the banks. That's the demand which is being created. That's the buyers they want to create so that their sell orders get filled over there. 
I think this is just how the market works. And if you understand this simple psychology of how the market works, believe me, you can trade with any system. And I'm, I'm the first one to tell you, you can trade with any system. If you understand the working of the market, it still gives you an edge. But once again, a lot of traders just don't think about it. And let's go to the next slide, right? Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. This slide over here. I need to take all this on addition tools. I'm sorry for that. I, how do I? No, I don't want to pay. Yeah, just, just, that's it. Just down the bottom, that little projector screen. If you yeah. Go back to that button down at the bottom, Sir Neil. Um, right here? Yeah. You wanted to maximize it? Yeah, but um, I want to remove the annotation tool. I'm so I'm not used to this. Uh... Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Now I'll put some indicators over here. Retail traders. Come in most retail traders, one of the main reasons why they lose money is because they follow indicators. And let, let me be very honest about this. It's not really a retail trader's fault. Today, if you do a Google search on you know trading institutes, trading courses, Forex courses, you'll come across a million of them, and 90% of them talk about indicators. Nobody talks about your risk management, nobody talks about the psychology of the trading. So obviously a retail trader who comes in thinks that using indicators is the way to go. And this is how I started off. Believe me, in, let me give you something very a humorous thing on this. As I told you, I got a background in mathematics. I bought a book on indicators. I opened a demo account. I studied each and every indicator. Believe me, I studied every indicator. I tweaked this indicator, I tweaked that indicator on a demo account, everything worked fine till I opened the live account and it wouldn't work. I must have blown up at least eight to 10 accounts initially in my heydays, believe me. It took me a year, year and a half to become even remotely successful. And the irony of it was that I started writing articles for magazines. I still do on the international magazines, you know, the traders magazines, the Forex journal, the commodities magazines. In those days I used to write about indicators, I would get paid for that. I would get paid for writing articles, but I never made money from my trading. There is the irony of the whole thing till I realized what I was doing wrong. So a new trader who comes and he talks about indicators. Now, first, let me talk about two indicators. The first one is this moving average. Now I've just put two standard moving averages, which a lot of people tend to use a 250 moving average and believe me, I think that the moving averages are one of the most lagging indicators. And if I see any trader using a moving average, I would say that person is headed for trouble. This one thing I completely avoid. There is a way to use them. We do go over this, try and understand the trend. That's it. But if you're going to use any indicator for your trading parameters to get an entry into a trade, to manage a trade, to get an exit into a trade, out of a trade, you're headed for big trouble. Let's go over this one. So this is what your crossovers, right? In this existing downtrend over here, you will sell when you have this crossover right over here. When does this crossover happen? This crossover happens here. Where was price? Price was over here. When did the move start? It started from here. You have missed out the meat of the move, literally. Similarly, if you look at this uptrend, when has this uptrend started? Uptrend started from here. When did your crossover take place? Right here, where was price? When your crossover took place, price was ready to reverse. So you have retail traders coming in 
when the move is just about to get over, when the bank has taken up all this profit, you have missed out all of this profit and you are getting into a trade when they start selling it to you. So the retail trader is left holding the bag, as I call it, right? That's one. The second is oscillators. I've just used a stochastic with a standard setting. Any oscillator, you use a MACD, you use an RSI, you use a CCI, it's the same thing. The standard way of using it is, well, as soon as it goes oversold and you have a crossover of the line, you buy. It goes overbought above 80, you have a crossover of the line, you sell. Now, have a look at this yourself. If I would have sold over here, price still goes up. If I would have sold over here, price still goes up. If I would have sold over here, price still goes up. This is where most traders tend to lose money. The simple fact which technical analysis books, courses do not talk about is if your indicator, if your oscillator, so any indicator which is banded between a value of zero to 100 is an oscillator, we talk about a MACD and RSI, a stochastic, all these oscillators, if it goes overbought, it actually means that your bullish momentum is very strong. And you should not be fighting it, you should remain in the direction of the trade. It's like standing in front of a moving train. But again, most traders are not aware of this. So this is the point which I wanted to make about the indicators. The banks know exactly what kind of indicators are being used by the retail traders. So they will place their orders around those levels. To be very honest, this could possibly have a zone somewhere over here, but they know that there's going to be a moving average crossover. This is where a lot of people are going to buy, and this is where our sell orders have to be. And I've seen this firsthand. This is exactly what they do. Now, this is how the market works. And it's important that you understand. The most important part is in forex the other side of your trade is held by a bank or an institute it's just as simple as that sorry i'm sorry about that i seem to be having some problems with my annotation tool <laughs> Not to worry, not to worry. Just, is, is there any, any questions on this? I mean, the, the, some, some yeah. of this, yeah. Daniel, is, is stuff that uh, I think some of us will have seen elements of this before um, in, in, in some seminars you may have been to, but I, I can see the way that you're, you're trying to get us to think about the market and who, which sort of entities are actually in control of the markets. And once you understand that, you get a bigger understanding of maybe what what's going to be happening, what's what's what, what's going to move the markets. Uh, I can see a couple of questions specifically coming in uh, now. Yeah. Are, you know, what platform does Sunil use to trade, and which indicators does he endorse or use in his trading? Okay. Uh I use the MetaTrader. I'm more comfortable with the MetaTrader. That's the only platform that I use. And the only indicator I use is the stochastic with a particular setting of 955 because the main, my main trading system is the divergence. And there's a reason it's only an oscillator which can give you a divergence. A divergence can be spotted on a MACD on an RSI, but there is a particular divergence that I follow, which can be seen only with the stochastic. And I use a lot of Fibonacci levels, as I've said. So this is how my charts look like all over. I mean, you, you look at any chart. You, you look at any chart. This is what my charts look like. I may have, I use a lot of harmonic patterns, 
Let me show you something here on the CAD. On the monthly, I'm more of a swing trader, but green charts with the stochastic, that's about it. I don't use any indicators. Everything is based on price action. And okay. the Fibonacci. Price action. Bob, Bob's asking what about the moving averages that were in the diagram? Oh, that, that was just for demonstration purposes. I do not use moving average. I do not advocate the use of moving averages. Trust me, it's a personal thing. Maybe I, I've seen the effectiveness of how they can be really, really ineffective and how the banks can use moving average to drop it, to trap the traders. Personal advice from my side, as far as possible, stay away from moving averages. Like I said, it's personal. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that before. Some people love them, either love yeah. them or loathe them. Uh, seems to be uh, two sides of the same coin. Uh, Marguerite asked a quick, good question. She says, do retail traders ever win against the banks, institutions? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes. You do if you are on the right side of the trades that they are taking. That's the only way. Let, let, mm -hmm. the, the saying that goes, if you can't beat them, join them. That's the only way that you can win against it. And the, let me tell you something personally. And this is not for an answer to your question. This is not a boast or this is not something. But I've been trading successfully. I make a living from my trading for the past 15 years or so. I'll go over this. I've got a couple of institutes where we teach trading. The success ratio of our students has been quite good comparatively. And I'll go over this. We put our money where our mouth is. We have got a fund for our traders. Successful traders go on to join our fund. We put our money over there. This is how confident we are of the system. Again, the system is based on the concept that we are riding the coattails of the professionals, and that's where it works. I understand. Uh, now, let's see more questions coming. This is great, fantastic uh, response here. James, Sunil was making a point about the bank's approach to FIB levels. Mm -hmm. Example 61.8. Just... I am going to go over that one. I am going to go over that one. That's a very interesting concept, and that's okay. a very important concept. I will. Yep. Okay, can we hold hold that. Just park that for a moment while we get through some of these questions. Um, yep. Paresh is asking if India does not allow forex trading, then how is Sunil trading forex living in India? Yeah. Well, it, it's. So I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't call it a loophole. There's a reason I have a registered office in London. I have an office, I have a company in Singapore. I have a company in the US. To be very honest, I all my trading is done from my companies outside. When I get the money back home to India, which I do, I'm a taxpayer in India, I show it as money received by for training, not for trading. So. I still pay my tax on whatever foreign income I get. It's a huge tax over here, but it's legal because I show it as money received from training. But what I do outside is none of their concern. So that's the loophole that I <laughs> managed to get out of. <laughs> so. very, very, very transparent of you. I think I salute you. <laughs> um, final question. Um, let's go to Ar Aram again. Is, is Sunil suggesting to avoid momentum trading? Oh, not not at all, not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, momentum trading is good. Or oh, let's put it this way: my main trading technique that I follow, that I look at, is the divergence, which is a reversal of a trend. But there are other things which are based on Fibonacci's. For example, I'm looking at a setup on the Canadian dollar right now, monthly. So which is momentum trading, which is, I use a lot of harmonic patterns. I'm considered to be a specialist in harmonic patterns. Believe me, harmonic patterns are not as complicated as it's made out to be. It's just a combination of Fibonacci. So it is momentum trading. Whether you're doing momentum trading, whether you're doing trend trading, reversal trading, the simple fact is the concepts remain that if your bank is moving price to a certain level and you know where that level is, well, you remain in the direction of the trend. 
once it reaches the level, you reverse it from there. It's just as simple as that. Okay, thank you. Okay, some good questions there. Now, uh, yeah. let's go back to James's uh, question he was asking. Uh, to, to Let's have a look again at the bank's approach to FIB levels, exactly. The FIB level, 61.8. Yes, uh, I am going to come back. This is a classical example right here on the GVP CAD. This is a trade that we are looking at right now. I am planning to get into a trade and I'm going to go over this one. The reason behind why it gets into it. Uh, let me just complete of the slides. There are just a couple of slides, but which I think is very important. So can I just go ahead and complete the slides? Absolutely, Sydney. So that that'd be fine. Let's, let's let's finish up the slides and then we go back to the charts. And uh, uh, and yes, I will first. come back to the 61.8 because it's a classical example of how the banks are trapping the traders. Okay, so here. Most traders are entering what I call shark infested waters, where these banks institutes have got deep pockets, huge resources, and you just cannot compete with them. That's first. So if there is a small percentage of traders who are successful, obviously there is a way. Retail traders, when they come in, they look for the holy grail for trading, which most often is a trading system. Everybody wants a good trading system. The successful trading is not just a trading system. It's a combination of different factors. Like I said, nobody said that trading is easy. I have seen a lot of traders who come in with the mentality that because it's a 24 hour market and I can trade anytime, it's what I call as a gambling mentality. I can open up an account with a thousand dollars, double my money in one month because people have told them that Forex trading can, you can make huge amounts of money double my account in one month and buy a Ferrari at the end of the year, that, that's the intention they come out with. And once they realize that trading involves a lot of hard work, and I call it hard work, there's a lot of dedication, there's a lot of practice which goes into it, there's a lot of perseverance which happens, there's a lot of patience and discipline which is required, most of them just give up. And this is where your psychology of trading comes in. You have to approach this market with the correct factors. If you come in with the incorrect expectations, obviously you're not going to succeed. You come in with the correct expectations, but what we do is when we start a course, what we're going to do, Simon, is whenever I start a course, the first thing I always talk about is getting your expectations correct. And I'm the first one to say, this is not a get rich overnight scheme. You are not going to be successful for the next six months, if at all. Take that into account that four, five, six months, you're going to practice, practice, practice till you get good at it. If you want to double your money in one month, you're in the wrong place. And I'm sorry, I don't do that. It, you know, you set your expectations correct. People will come in and they will expect that. But believe me, once you do it, it is a skill for a lifetime. You don't need anything else. And this is the huge advantage. So combination of different factors, which I describe as the three M's. Right, let me go over it very quickly because I want to get back to the charts, but it's important. So unless you incorporate these three M's in your trading, the likelihood of success is very low. So these three M's are money, mind, and method in this order. Now, earlier we did have the earlier speaker, he talked about the psychology taking up 90% of the trading. Well, I completely agree with that. My, Statistics may be a little different. I call it money, mind, method. Now, if I distribute these on a scale of one is to 10, the money, which is your risk management, will take up five parts out of 10. The mind factor, I simply call it patience and discipline, takes up three parts out of 10. And the method, I could give you 10 different methods. They just take up two parts out of 10. So you see, your method is the least important part of the trading. And this is where most traders tend to lose. The novice trader does not understand the concept of the money and the mind factor. They concentrate on the method. And in this method, they tend to use indicators. So which means out of the 10 parts, this trader is following out, say, maybe 0 0.5. Now, is it surprising that this new trader loses money? And then he turns around and he says, 
Nobody can succeed in trading. It does give trading a bad name because everybody, people who lose money say that this is gambling, nobody can succeed. The random movements, how can you make money? But well, there are people who are making money. There are people who are doing it, so obviously there is a way. Let's quickly talk about the three M's in brief, right? Money, for me, that's the most important part. Literally, if your money management policies are correct, you could trade with any system and you'd still make money. As traders, obviously, we are here to make money from the market. What is a priority? I always say that as a trader, your first priority is of a risk manager. You are there to conserve your capital. The minute you control your risk, your account is going to grow. There is no two ways about it. The trader's capital is the bloodline. Obviously, without capital, you cannot trade. Conserving the capital becomes very important. Controlling your losses. Controlling your capital means controlling your losses, your risk. A single loss is just not a loss of capital only. It puts you two steps behind in your quest to profitability. This is because simple mathematics for every person gain needed to recover from a loss, it increases dramatically. Exponentially actually should be the right word over here. This is a chart. Let's take the 50% part of it, right? Look at the 50% and let's just take an example. I have an account of $5,000. If I lose 50% of that, that means I'm left with $2,500. Now to get back to break even, I need to make another $2,500 on my existing $2,500 just to get back to break even. So if I lose 50% of my account, I need to recover 100% to get back to break even, and then my profits start. Now this is simple mathematics. Most traders are not aware of this or they just ignore this thing. You have to control your risk. That is the first and foremost job as a trader. Now we have two golden rules of risk management, which I'm not gonna go over here, which is part of the session. It's a very simple thing, everybody knows it, but believe me, if you have the discipline, and I'm talking about the discipline to follow only these two rules, that puts you in the top 10% winning bracket, it does. I could give you the best trading system in the world, but if your risk management is not in place, you are not going to make money, period. On the other hand, if I just follow my two golden rules of risk management, I could trade with a toss of a coin. Heads I go long, tails I go short. I will still make money, believe me, I will. I'll mathematically prove it to you, but again, we are not here to gamble, right? We are here to put the odds in our favor. Then comes a mind part. This is most difficult. This is where you need practice, even for an experienced trader. My take on this is successful traders are not born. You're not inbuilt to be a successful trader. You have to put in the practice for that. And that practice, trading on demo account, trading on a live account for some time is building up your discipline and patience, learning how to accept losses, learning how to move ahead without going into revenge trading. This requires practice. This is where your practice comes in, which is why I always say you cannot, after you do a course, any course, you cannot become a successful trader because you need to put in that practice. This is your mind factor, right? And then of course comes the method. Your trading system should be something which is effective and easy to follow. Effective, there are 100 systems out over there. There are algos out over there. There are trading systems based on momentum, on reversals, on moving averages, on indicators. As I said, there are a thousand ways to skin a cat. You could trade with any system. Now, I'm the first to tell you that you decide what system is you're gonna be comfortable with Something which is effective and something which is easy to follow, don't make it complicated. For us, divergence is a primary trading technique, and this is based on the concept that institutional traders create traps for the retail traders. Now, in the divergence, the reason why I use a stochastic, this is what I want you to talk about, there are three types of divergences. There is a class A divergence, there is a class B divergence, and there is a class C divergence. Not many people know the difference between that. Everybody trades the divergence just as it is. It's only when I use the stochastic with that particular 
setting that I can identify a class A divergence, which has a success ratio of almost 80%. Yes, you heard it right, 80%. What I'm doing is I'm ignoring the class B and I'm ignoring the class C. So more than half of my unsure trades, I'm eliminating right in the beginning. I don't look at those. This is what makes this more successful. And then using Fibonacci ratios, using different Fibonacci ratios. Once again, which I said, there are different ratios. Everybody uses it for the same purpose, but Fibonacci retracements are to be used for a different situation. Fibonacci fans are to be used for a different situation. Fibonacci expansions are to be used for a different situation. People don't tell you about this, but this is what we differentiate. And now using institutional Fibonacci levels. Okay, that, that brings me to the end of the slides over here. The last one is having a trade plan. I always say that business trading is a business of probabilities and I call it a business. I don't call it a game. I don't call it a hobby. It's a business of probabilities. The market is huge, literally. Once you take a trade, it's completely out of your hands. The market controls it. But what you can control is your trade management, which is why having a trade plan becomes crucial. We put down a trade plan for every system that we have. The most important thing is because this is a business of probabilities, you have to put rules. You have to take out the emotions from the trading. If you put down rules and if you have the discipline to follow the rules, that this is my trading system. Step one, two, three, four. I get my setup. If step one happens, step two happens, step three happens, I go ahead and I take a trade on step four, regardless of the outcome of my trade that is not in my hand. I will have losing trades. Of course, I'll have losing trades. That's part and parcel of trading. But that's what makes a successful trader that you follow your rules once you've set it down, regardless of what's going to happen, which is why trade plan comes in. All right, okay, so that is your, uh, before we go to the questions, let me give you my company secrets. One secret which I could tell you right away. This is your 61.8 Fibonacci level, right? This is your 61.8. Everybody knows this. Now, logically, don't you think that everybody knows this, even the banks know that. They will use the 61.8 level to trap the traders. What happens in this case? Well, let, let me just technically go over this. Why do we use a Fibonacci ratio? Now here, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this move up. I'm looking for certain areas of resistance. So if I plot my fibs from here, I expect price to find resistance at a 61.8, maybe at a 50. So if we would have turned down from here, maybe I would have resumed my previous downtrend. If it stops at a 61.8 and it starts going down, this is what we look at, right? This is why we use Fibonacci's. Now, you will see that most of the times when you plot your fibs, price will always react around the 61.8. Let me get this one. right over here, right? And if I'm trading the hard right edge of the chart right over here, price stop bang at the 61.8 and I have one candle, I have a second candle going down right over here. So retail trader, when he's talking about simple Fibonacci levels, oh, it stopped at a Fibonacci. The 61.8 is a resistance, time for me to sell. So he gets into a sell. Now, what does he do when he gets into a sell? he gets into a cell and he places his stops somewhere over the 61.8. He places stop order over here. You know it, I know it, the banks know it. What they will do is they will drive price through the stop loss level to take out the stops of the traders because that's how they make money. That's how they move the market. That's how the market moves in Forex. I'm very specific about Forex. And where does it go? 78.6 78.6 for me is the most crucial fibonacci level and this came from the banks let me tell you how i got to know this i would watch the banks when i was sitting with them that they would drive price past the 61.8 and take it to the 
No, 78.6 is a FIB level. My question to them was, why 78.6? Why not 88.6? Why not 69? I mean, why 78.6? What is the reason for it? Initially, of course, they were very cagey about it. Nobody in the bank wants to give out your trading process. But I gleaned some secrets out of these when I went to the pubs in the evening for these guys and over some beer and everything, to be very honest about it. 78.6 mathematically is a square root of 61.8, which is why maybe traders choose it, but that, that's the only logic that I have it. Do an experiment. Everybody is over here. Go through your charts, mostly longer term time frames. I prefer longer term time frames. This is something that we'll discuss in a, another time. On the four hour on the daily, check the amount of time price stops exactly at the 78.6 after to getting a reaction at the 61.8, you will be surprised. So that's the importance of your FIB levels. Okay, so I'm done. I've given away too many secrets right in the beginning over here. Time for question answers. <laughs> that's great, yeah, no, we really get to the, to the FIBs there. Fantastic, well, Bob says, thank you, you've answered my question uh, already. Bob was asking, he'd spotted. Uh, the 78.6 uh, was the standard level, okay. so we've covered that, that which is great. Does anybody have any other final questions? Sunil, you've, you've, you've done really well. You've filled in uh, a little bit of time that uh, we had because uh, Steve's not been able to join us uh, this lunchtime. So uh, to, to those of you that, that were looking forward to seeing Steve roughly, uh, my apologies, he, he just hasn't been uh, at the end of the phone or online um so something unusual has popped up um uh, but uh, we'll, we'll try and get steve back again uh, to join us in next week uh, in, in the, instead but uh, we've had ben kennedy from aria trading and uh, sunil mangwani uh, keeping us entertained and educated the last hour on his uh, system strategies uh, yeah. oh, this, one, uh, one, one thing if i can just go over simon I would just like to talk about one thing is that if you have a slot next Thursday again, I would like to, you know, if there is some time, just come and go over the charts and talk about the traps. Uh, what I want to do is this is my website. You can see I have invented one harmonic pattern, which I call is the diamond pattern, which I've patented. It's based simply on the divergence. I trade different instruments there is i'm a director of a company which is based in london which is bread crown trading uh, we do crude oil exclusively only crude oil with the same principles the same technologies nothing very different uh, i have an institute in california which is willow trading here uh, this is where we have a fund we conduct our courses students are taken to a fund if you prove your worth, if you're good enough, you are trading with a $50,000 account. Whatever money you make, 70% goes to the trader, 30% goes to the company. So we are so confident of our system that we are actually put our money where the mouth is. We give you an opportunity. Because with Simon, as he was saying, on 13th and 14th of April, we are organizing a two-day Forex workshop online. So it's going to be a webinar from GMT time 10. Anybody who's interested, I would love to see you folks over there. So just let us know. And like I guess it's next Thursday. If you have a slot, I would like to come and just go over the charts. No slides. Talk about things on the charts. Just the, that's okay. the live announcement. Well, we'll see. Yep, I've got a few people um, in the frame already for, for next Thursday. But we'll, we'll try and maybe see if we can just even get 15 minutes or so. Yeah, that that would be fantastic. Well, Sunil, thank you for joining us. As I say, that that details of that two-day workshop. It's a webinar workshop we're holding uh, 13th and 14th of April. I think I said 8th and 9th um, at the beginning of this, so apologies for that. It's the 13th and 14th. It's the Monday and Tuesday, so that'll be 10 to 4, uh, as we said. So thank you, Sunil uh, and, uh, and Mangwani, um, for that. Um, thank you, everybody else, uh, for joining us today. As I said, I've got some other uh, speakers coming to join us uh, next Thursday. And just before we go, I, I would um, like to, just before we go, just to 
highlight something that I will be sending you uh, some emails about these other webinars that I'm been organizing in conjunction with Fineco Bank. Uh, a lot of you will know I've been doing the seminars with Fineco for the past year now. There we go. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, most interesting webinar. This is Marguerite. Um, thank you. Most interesting. Interesting, Sunil. Thanks for from Gordon as well. So good. Some 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 good feedback. So thank you um, for that, Sunil. And hopefully, yeah, we'll get back for for some live chart analysis um, next Thursday. We'll squeeze that in. Yeah, uh, we'll do. Thank Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. There we are. So just just before we go, yeah, this this is the Fineco Bank um, website, and you find yourself find your way to the the, the webinars page. And you'll see there. Um, I've been working with Adam Harris, who has been on several round the clock trader events before. He's going to be doing two at least two webinars a month um, with the the Fineco Bank platform. Uh, and, and actually, I'd, I'd like to get someone from Fineco, maybe Antonio would come onto this event um, at some point just to give us a, a look at the Fineco platform. It's a great platform. The Fineco Bank are offering a, a, a platform that offers a, a current account, an investment account, for, uh, and a trading platform, all all under the one umbrella, if you like. It's, it's quite a, a, a nice offering. They offer the ability to analyze stocks and reports and obviously trade forex and cfds as well it's it's all there in a very easy manageable platform so we'll have a look at, at that uh, hopefully sometime soon but if you can come to the Fineco website sign up adam's going to be starting this is a a series of six webinars that he'll be doing starting with the, the trader journey how to can see how to achieve consistency in technical trading 15th of april one hour in the evening uh, and you can see the He's going to be talking about following the trading strategies, uh, avoiding over and under trading, uh, and, and instilling proper risk management. And then again, he will be returning on the 29th of April, uh, day trading versus swing trading, which is best. Uh, we all struggle uh, to, to, to sort of decide one, but it, it really depends on you. But he'll be looking at that, uh, how you can make a living uh, not necessarily day trading or holding positions overnight, making the comparisons and uh, uh, that's going to be a live webinar there on the 29th of April. Before we get to that though, uh, there is another chance for us, uh, Alpesh has put together a special event for uh, Fineco Bank. Um, now he's update, updated the title of this webinar um, since the crisis uh, broke uh, the sort of global emergency that we're in. So he's updating all the content for this webinar um, and uh, we'll be sending you details of that 22nd of April with Alpha. So if you can uh, head over to the Fineco website and uh, please get yourself booked up to these webinars, that'd be great. And of course, don't don't miss these these other uh, great little webinars that are happening um, all the time at Fineco, uh, giving you more of a sort of instructive tours of the, the platform um, answering all of your questions on the different products that they've got there. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you details of that uh, anyway before they turn up. Um, yes, I will be sending you dates of these garden. Uh, it'll come out as a sort of Fineco branded webinar uh, and this should be good. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and I'm sorry that uh, we didn't get to see Steve today. Um, <laughs> he's, something's come up, uh, but uh, not most unlikely. He he will be back. I'm sure we'll we'll get it back for next uh, Thursday or maybe even something in in between that. Uh, and I've got another few people as well, uh, so we'll just confirm them and I'll keep you in touch with all that. So in the meantime, enjoy your locking down um, experience and uh, obviously stay safe, everybody. I know it's trying times. We're all a bit sort of uh, worried and concerned, but uh, you know I'm confident we're going to get through this and uh, we'll look back on it and uh, be thankful that it would be somewhere that we can leave in the past. Uh, there's some, some good news coming out. And uh, so, oh, Eddie Large has just passed away, says Wayne, what a shame. I know, it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing all sorts of, uh, losing all sorts of people. Um, not, not just the celebrities, of course, but all these people that are doing good stuff, uh, you know, 
parts of the uh, NHS, of course. So we're uh, thinking of them all and uh, been good to get together. So we're enjoying these these events. Yeah, look after yourself too, Wayne, and, uh, and to you all. Thanks very much for attending. Um, see you again soon.